This week, I'm heading into the mountains to forage mushrooms. We've gotten tons of rain this year, so I'm taking full advantage of it. Join me as I show you some tips on how to collect food from the forest floor to make some of the most memorable trips and the most rewarding meals you will ever make. Good morning. So I'm over by Twin Lakes, Colorado in an area that I've never been to before. I'm looking for chanterelles. I'm looking for the spruce and conifer trees because that's where they're gonna be. If you've never hunted mushrooms in Colorado and I've been doing a lot of these videos this year because I really do enjoy foraging. It's just like fishing. When you catch a fish and you eat it, there's an appreciation that happens there. When you hunt, there's something very rewarding to that. And foraging is honestly one of my favorite things to do because when you come home with a bunch of mushrooms, clean them up and cook them, and they're really good, there's just something to it. We're gonna get moving. driving dirt roads this weekend and I still air them down because it's better for your shocks it's better for you and you can go a little bit faster so you've got all this wet stuff grass and everything chanterelles don't really grow in that kind of stuff but then I saw this area and you got a bunch of pine needles and stuff like that. This is where I usually look for these. We've kind of gotten out of the aspens, into the conifers and the spruce trees and stuff. You're looking for pine needles because they like to grow in that. I think it's more of like an aerated soil so they can grow a little bit, a bit easier. Chanterelles are like a bright orange right there. I think that's, no way, that was quick. Are those chanterelles, those, these are not them. Never mind. they're not what we're looking for. You can see on these that the gills, and please use a book as well. Get an identification book and don't eat these until you get home and look them up again because, you know, don't just go off a YouTube video. But with a chanterelle, these gills right here will attach farther down the stem here. These might be chanterelles. Yep, there we go. So in these big open areas, there's not really any trees around. They like to grow in this kind of stuff. So this has a waxy top, as you can see here. It's a very smooth top. And when you flip it over, that is a chanterelle. That's a good one. Beautiful. Good coloring to it. The ones I got a couple weeks ago were a little lighter than that. But see how the gills go all the way down. And they have a very particular smell. I've seen them enough times where I'm 100% confident. But anyway, so I've got a few here. All sorts of gear come in these mesh bags and you can put your mushrooms in this so then as you walk and it hangs from you it'll spread spores as you go and then always mark the areas that you found mushrooms because then you can go back and find more the next year generally speaking if you have a brush you can knock all this dirt off i just cut it with a knife and then cutting them off at the base will often leave less of a mess in your bag and less cleanup for later. But, ooh, that's a pretty one. That's like a perfect chanterelle there. And even when they have the waxy top, don't get too complacent on the gills. I like to do a cut to the bottom. That's a healthy one. These are really healthy. So are these mosquitoes that are buzzing around. So I had a new mushroom brush that was supposed to be here by this trip. I bought it off Etsy, a handmade one, and did not make it. You can use little paint brushes to kind of swoop this away, and right now is the best time to do it. 
but I'm not prepared for that, so I'm going to put them all in the bag and deal with that later. I don't even know if I have a brush of any sort that I could do it with here, actually. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, see that one's, that one's a little bit out of my range. See all this mold? We're not gonna, we're not gonna mess with that. But yeah, like this one's super dirty. And so that's why a mushroom brush comes in handy. Okay. Oh, look at those monsters. Pretty one. Yeah, like, you can do pretty well just knowing what they look like. I learned how to do this from different hunters that I've hung out with. And then once you've found some of these things, they're, they're unmistakable. Get used to the smell of them, but have a book. Please don't rely on me. I'm pretty confident with uh, my chanterelle picking and identification, but take a book with you to compare. There's a lot of them over here. I did not expect to find this many. I expected to find a few, and it's just a good year for it. So I have my phone. Always have your mapping app with you so you can find your way back to your truck. So I'm gonna put a waypoint here. And of course, I will not be sharing this waypoint. And there's a mushroom on here somewhere, I know it. So I've done it before. There we go, mushroom, chanterelle, hot spot. Awesome, now I got it marked, and I can find this spot again real easy. I've only been awake for a couple of hours, and this has been a very successful trip. This is literally what I came out here for. That is a very pretty example of a chanterelle. Gills go all the way down, orange, waxy on the top. This one's gonna taste delicious. And when you're first getting into these, smell the bottom. Pick one up, smell it, pick one up, smell it. Cause you'll be walking through the woods sometimes not even looking for these and you'll pick up on the scent and then you know that you found some really without even looking. Chanterelle mushrooms usually start to pop up in mid to late summer and through fall. And in my experience in Colorado, they're generally over 10,000 feet in elevation. I have found them in Arkansas in the middle of summer, however, and obviously this is a lower elevation. So do some research on your local area to see where they could be popping up. I like doing trails, of course, as you guys have seen, but there's so much cool stuff to do. And this is that's another beautiful one. This is another one, another thing that I like to do, another reason that I have the truck. Doing pretty good, look at the haul so far. And we've got a lot more to get. And you can dehydrate these too. I've seen them at the store dehydrated. You can also sell them to restaurants. I'd rather eat them. I don't seem to run into like right here, there's not a lot of different mushrooms growing within these chanterelles. They usually have kind of their own territory almost. I don't know why that is. Wow, a clump of them. I haven't seen one of these in a couple years. It's just a whole group of them together. Awesome, these ones are harder to clean but you get a whole ton. I got a whole handful of chanterelles out of one cut. Man, my pizza tonight is gonna be perfect. I'm gonna have to run back and drop some of these before too long. I've got too many mushrooms. Okay, well, I think my little hot spot might have been picked through all the way. I did a little circle here, but I'm not finding any others and now I'm in the Aspens where they're much less likely to be so I'm working my way back down to the truck and I might move along and go look somewhere else this is where elk like to hang out and eat bark off the sides of these trees and by the way blues back in the truck she came with me at first and then she turned around and hightailed it back to the truck I don't know if she might have got a whiff of a bear or something like that you never know black on it. Bummer. Now I'm going to go try to find a campsite, which I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to easily do because this place is super busy. There are people everywhere. 
Actually, I'm going to get on Gaia and see what all I can find. It looks like there's some stream front camping up there. So that's where I'm going to take off to. I'm going to see if I can get a riverside spot or creekside spot. So I'm going to map it out here. Or I kind of already mapped it out here, saved all this stuff offline. And um, yeah, I'm going to go see what I can find. All right, driving by, I was pretty sure I saw some, or at least a possibility of chanterelles. Those are chanterelles. And I'm getting lucky this weekend. This is a score and I'm gonna collect them all, but I am finding some other ones growing next to them. So again, just be able to identify those gills and the scent. I don't have my big camera with me right now, or else I might be able to pick it up with my mic. But I can hear a cat screaming in the woods, which is pretty eerie if you don't know what it is, because it almost sounds like a person. But I just heard it scream off a couple times. We have found an awesome campsite with a little stream running through it. My mushroom haul, I'm so proud of this. This is awesome. They cook down really small, like any mushroom. These are so good on pizza. Man, I can't wait. About that time, I'm gonna make a, make a whiskey drink and go wander around a little bit. Camp cocktails are pretty glorious. So, a little bottle of tin cup, lemonade. Let's take a little, let's take a little walk. Whenever you're in valleys like this, it's pretty amazing because you can look around and you won't really see wildlife. Like you might see some near your camp, but you won't just see it with your naked eye unless you have supervision like Natalia does. But if you have a pair of binoculars, I guarantee right now, if I get my binoculars out, which I will here in a minute, I'll be able to spot at least a deer, but probably elk on the hillside. Oh yeah, there's trout in that. I just saw one. I think he just saw me because he darted. I've never been to this area, but it's very apparent that this road exists for the same reason most four wheel drive trails in Colorado exist, mining operations. Most of the mining trails on this mountain are unfortunately not open for four wheel drive, but it's still incredible to see how much work went into this rock. I have to assume that these hardworking men and women were well versed in forging the forest floor as it was probably almost necessary to do so from time to time. I may have been picking mushrooms from somebody of the 1800s secret stash. Or perhaps even before that, native tribes going back thousands of years gathered food here, and that is awesome to think about. We waits her whole life for squirrels, and now she's falling asleep while they're running around everywhere. Now I'm gonna start making my fancy pizza. Look at all of these chanterelle mushrooms. That is beautiful. So I'm gonna use more of these than I could possibly ever need. 
on this pizza. And I'm going to choose some that are fairly clean because these are kind of a pain to clean out. For the little pizzas that I'm going to make, I'm going to consider that this is a ton. Now I don't have a brush of any sort with me other than my camera lens brush. And I'm sure not going to use that to clean mushrooms with. A paintbrush is ideal because you can go like this and it'll get inside of those grooves and it'll get all of that dirt out of there. I'm going to have to use something else. I don't know if that's going to... Oh, I do have a brush. My dish brush. It's a little coarse, but we're going to try it. Just little, little tiny black spots. Good enough. I'm definitely going to be eating some dirt on these pizzas. Most of the mushroom brushes are made out of like uh, boar's hair or horse hair. And honestly, if I were to fire up my ARB compressor, I could probably blow a lot of this stuff off, but then I'd have... My air tank's probably pretty nasty. But I'm a monkey, so you know what? I just eat a little bit of dirt. It's going to be all right. sausage one and maybe two just in case four cheese pizzas they're cheap they're easy and they work well for camping you could do your own dough but I don't want to go that far I recommend two pizzas per person. First and foremost, we need to put these chanterelles on because these, these are just gonna be packed pizzas. What can you do about it? This Merlot cheese is gonna give this the final flavor that it really needs. Trust me. so good very identifiable by that smell like I was saying it's a very distinguished smell so I'm gonna put these in the floorboard of the FJ and I'll deal with that tomorrow I'm just waiting for these pizzas to finish up and then honestly me and blue will probably get into the tent relatively early it's eight o'clock okay so things that we have learned I've learned that this thermometer doesn't work very well. Look at this. If you can see this. Oh yeah, you can. And there are my pizzas. Fantastic. Absolutely worth it. There's just something cool to finding food. I mean, especially in today's world where we're so disconnected from it. It's just cool to mushrooms, fish, hunting gardening it's cool to like get your own food like this no baby i can't give you none of this that pizza was very rewarding and very delicious that deer i hiked out with jesse for four miles last year and it wasn't super vertical but it was still at about 10,500 feet and we hiked it out four miles and that was the second time that day we had to hike out our 70 pound packs over the same trail, hike back to the trucks, drop our stuff off, and then go back for the deer. And we both had a deer. So I definitely earned the deer. This dog was just freezing half to death down there. So I had to get her into the tent. She was getting mad at me, but it's all good now. But And then tomorrow morning, the typical making coffee, making some breakfast, and I'll be on my way back home so I can get some editing done. Heading to bed.
I thought the Hess mattress helped keep the tent warmer when me and Natalia went out to uh, do that crazy winching trail, but now I'm sure of it. She's shivering over there, just waiting for a squirrel to jump into her mouth. This poor dog. I literally just watched the squirrel run right behind her. She's the worst hunter. She's the worst hunter. This to me is what it's all about, is getting out and finding new territory. And of course you're gonna go back to spots like I'll be back here next year, just for the mushrooms if nothing else. And to show Natalia that I found a new spot, creek front camping like right here, it's just so cool. If you have a vehicle like this and you get out and do this kind of stuff, go out and spend some weekends just exploring. Some of the coolest things that I've ever found were just going out and exploring. I would argue that all of my best experiences outdoors were when I was just doing stuff like this. It wasn't a specific trail I was going to, I was just going out and exploring. On our way back to civilization, we stopped for some more chanterelles, and well... We are heading straight home now because Blue just disturbed like a wasp nest and started getting stung. I don't know how many times she got hit, but she was freaking out. There's a lot of them. At first I thought they were just like some sort of flies because there'll be a lot of flies around something. But then she was like barrel rolling kind of stuff to get them off of her. She got a sting here, here, and her eye is swollen up. That's what I was afraid of. I haven't been able to see her eye this whole time. They don't seem like they're getting bigger. Let's inspect a little bit more. I'm sorry, pup. Well, unfortunately, it looks like they only got her on the eye, or on the face. All right, I've got to air up my tires, give her another allergy pill, and be on our way as quick as we can. A little bit of sidewall damage, that's not good. Hopefully my tire doesn't blow out before I get home and I'll swap that tire around tomorrow with my spare, take it in to get repaired or replaced and we'll be good to go. It looks like blue swelling's going down so we probably would have been okay, but better safe than sorry. Her eyes are still a little bad, but it'll, it'll probably be gone by the time we get home. So we still got about another hour. But anyway, so that is the end of this trip. This was a pretty exciting one, looking for mushrooms. I could have found more mushrooms, had blue, not pooped on a hornet's nest. That's basically what happened. There was a dead log because she's just on like a mound of stuff and she stepped through a dead log that the mound kind of came to and there happened to be a nest inside of it. So she like, yeah, so she woke him up and uh, it didn't work out very well for her. This has been an awesome trip. And uh, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time. <laughs>